Kristen Allen of Muhammad. First of all, I just have to tell the thousands of listeners <laughs> at home. You're laughing at me, Kristen. There could be thousands. <laughs> um, I've probably emailed you 50 times in the past few months with various requests, and you have said yes to them all. Let's review them. Number one, I asked if you would be a cooperating teacher for one of our teacher candidates. You said yes. I asked if I could bring a class of undergraduates to wreak havoc on your physical education classes this spring, you said yes. I asked if you would be a guest on this illustrious podcast, you said yes. I asked you if you would watch my two children all weekend while I see seven to eight feature films. I said no. You said yes. <laughs> so thank you so much, Kristen <laughs> Allen of Muhammad Seymour High School. Um, thank you for joining me on Beyond the Gym Floor. Welcome. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about your role at Muhammad. So I teach physical education and we're 9-12. It's a mix in all the classes. Um, I teach regular PE and then I also teach the conditioning, which is the strength and conditioning. So there's only two of us that teach that. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, when did you know that you first wanted to be a PE teacher? It's a loaded question for me. This is my third career. Okay, tell yeah, me more. So I didn't always know that I wanted to. So okay. I, I got my undergrad in athletic training. Where? And, um, Indiana State. Indiana State. Yep, nice. so a Bachelor of Science in Kines with athletic training. And then I went and got my master's and worked for Carl Sports Medicine here. Um, and then decided to be a police officer. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah. yeah, why not, right? With the Champaign County Sheriff's Office. Um, and then loved it, but I, I missed the sports. I missed teaching the fitness component, and uh, the schedule was hard as a police officer. So the answer to all of those was education, and why not physical education? So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so how long were you a police officer? Oh, not very long. Almost four years, I think. That's a long time. Three years, yeah. It felt longer some nights. See, now, midnight. now I want to start a new podcast and ask you questions about some of your experiences as a police officer because I find that so fascinating. But maybe we'll do that another time. Okay. I'll maybe. probably say yes. Okay. <laughs> you, will, you will definitely say yes, Kristen. Uh, so that's interesting journey yes. that not a, a lot of people experience. Usually... Folks realize in, during their undergrad, sometimes even before undergrad, like while they're in high school, oh, I love my PE teacher because he or she is also like a coach and a mentor, and I know I want to do this. So that's an interesting journey. Yeah. I didn't actually have the greatest experience in PE. I waved. I was an athlete. I waved, which I hate that now, right, yeah. as a PE teacher. Right. Um, so that was part of it once I decided to switch careers to be better. Yeah, to be better. I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. And and I hope that that's something where here at the University of Illinois that we're instilling that among our undergraduate students is just having some sort of a concept of the new PE. Can't How can we do things differently from the folks from the old guard? And it's just Absolutely. it's a mission of mine to just restructure the way we do things. Yes, and there are a lot of excellent physical education teachers that are doing that right now. Oh, absolutely, without yes. fail. Yeah. And so that's why I'm so glad that we have a teacher candidate with you this spring to learn from you, and hopefully mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, you'll have a positive experience with her. So you just mentioned that you waived PE when you were in high school. So did you have, even at the elementary level, a physical educator who mattered to you? Yes, and that was the one time. It was the elementary who ended up being my high school cross-country and track coach. Oh, wow. Yeah, he moved to the high school um, and actually taught history, um, but he taught PE in elementary. We loved it. What appealed to you about him? Uh, very charismatic, uh, the relationship building with mm -hmm. all of the students, even at a young age. I mean, and then I'm biased because he, be he ended up being my coach, so I got to know him over a lot of years, mm -hmm. still staying in contact with him and his family. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, what would you change about our discipline if you could? So, you know, what challenges do you still like, feel like you face? In PE? Yes. Um, that, that old school, that old school mindset of I'm a coach, roll the ball out. And it's not from necessarily educators or administration. It's the, the students and maybe parents who experienced that. Um, and it's, it's not a lot, but you can, it's still there. So, but that, I do, I use that to motivate me every day to move past that and to show that it's not, you know, physical education can be a, a subject that helps all of the other curriculums in the building. Absolutely. And when we look at it that way, um, 
you know, it can change a mindset, which... Do you feel like you're still battling that with parents and um, even students? Do they, or, or are they buying into what you're selling? Uh, Muhammad is great, and I think yes, because it's been, it's been that way for a while. The culture's been great with previous um, PE teachers. But yes, so I, I'll get a few, um, you know, questions like from the students, oh, you, so how do you become a, a PE teacher? And then they're shocked when it's the same as a regular, like, classroom teacher and, mm-hmm. you know, just that, that mindset. Interesting. Not, we're, you know, we're not in the classroom. We don't assign a bunch of homework, right. you know, but it's still very beneficial. So. Got it. That's, that's great. What's the most important lesson your students have taught you? Uh, to listen. Stop and listen to them first um, and to give them an, an opportunity to actually be heard. You know, in any lesson, whether it's small or not, and I'm in, in the weight room especially, and to hear their experiences, their concerns, their suggestions. That was a huge thing early on. And, I know, police, being in the police, that taught me how to talk to people mm-hmm. and my relationship building. So education has taught me to listen a little more to what they want because that's why I'm here. I'm here for them to enjoy movement and to be able to make the decisions later on when they're out of school that will help their body stay healthy and their mind stay healthy. And if I'm not listening to what they want or what they're interested in, then how are they gonna relate later on and remember, oh, that's what Mrs. Allen was talking about, like this fitness class or you know, this. So it comes from them first. Was it difficult to make that transition from, I mean, there, uh, being a police officer, you're kind of a boss in a way. <laughs> And I'm then too, you're still a boss, <laughs> but you, but that listening yes. component yeah. was a difficult to. Yeah, you had to listen as a police officer, you know, but di- way different situations. Mm-hmm. Um, it was. I think I was probably a little more bossy <laughs> in the beginning. I, I spoke first, yeah. maybe. Right. Um, but it's very similar. You know, you just it's about talking to people and with people and building relationships. Like that first elementary PE teacher yes. that you had. So yes. you still use him as a role model yes. in your mind. That's absolutely. Awesome. That's so great. Now, even though it sounds like you are a top-notch physical yeah. educator, how do you motivate those who are disengaged? I don't really know. I've been told that I do. Um, I just, I always try to figure out why they don't want to move, you know, in PE or why first. Um, you know, you have to address the issue and, you know, say, hey, we need you to move. But then to step back and try to get to know them and determine why. Almost maybe that's my police, the investigator kind of thing. And Because there's always a reason, whether it was a bad experience in PE before or they're just having a bad day or something. But trying to find that. And then um, at Muhammad, they have a lot of student choice with activities in regular PE. Um, so I try to provide units that I teach that they want. Um, so I I'm go out and try to find new ones. So we, you know, bringing new units to the school, getting out of my comfort zone oh, to yes. maybe teach something that I'm not comfortable with, but do the homework, learn it, because it's what the kids want. Have you had success stories? Um, with that? With student, with reaching someone who is previously disinterested. Um, yes. Um, and it usually, unfortunately, I think with teachers, we don't really find out ever or it's later on. So I live in the Muhammad community, um, so it always happens whether it's at the grocery store or maybe Walgreens, I'll run into a former student and they, the best thing that can ever, they can ever say to me is, and they usually do is, I took this class, you know, at the Y or because I do a lot of fitness type classes. And then they'll tell me like that that was their favorite part of PE Mm -hmm. when before maybe they didn't like necessarily the traditional units you know game-like activities so it's never going to happen in the moment but years later running into them at the grocery store it helps it helps me because then I it reassures that okay I'm doing something that they enjoy that maybe they'll choose later on in life I love it I love it so any advice you would share for someone who is not considering a a career in law enforcement who (laughs) they know they want to be a PE teacher as soon as they graduate you know, hold on to why, and that hopefully, you know, the why is because you want, you know, you want to do this. It's about movement. It's about staying healthy, being healthy, and keep an open mind and never stop learning. Don't get stuck because we're all guilty of that. 
you know, always look for a better way or a way that some other teachers doing it that would work for you or learning. Go to conferences. Go to all kinds of continuing ed. Um, one, that's going to help your students. And two, that's going to help you from getting burnt out where you can, you know, a new activity gives all of us, you know, a sense of purpose and energy and it's motivating. So, Excellent. Do you have a teaching highlight that comes to mind? A, a moment where something just connected? But it's, it just happens. So that's probably why it's fresh. Yeah. So I, I teach a, like, I'm a pound fit instructor, which is kind of, it's cardio drumming. It's one of those. And I, I need a, to come see that. Oh, you should do it. It's mm -hmm. fun. Um, I had a student, current student, she brought me in a newspaper. Um, it was a magazine article that her mom found, and it was about cardio drumming and how it helped this woman with osteoporosis. And she brought it to me. And she's like, my mom and I wanted you to see this. This is so cool, Mrs. Allen. Like the fact, I mean, that was cool. And that just happened, so it's fresh in my mind. No, I love it because it so, shows yes. that you, they're, they're leaving your class and they're still thinking about yeah. the experiences they've had. Yeah. And it was you're a real life. A difference. It wasn't yes. a school. It yeah. was a, I think the, the woman was 41 in the article. I love so. it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Kristen, since you're a hometown hero, clearly, <laughs> uh, the public, especially your current and your former students need to know, what do you listen to in the car when you're driving? Oh, man. Um, sometimes it's Frozen 2 ah, because of my do you have seven kids? year old daughter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. I have a playlist, my pound playlist, because I'm always practicing my new choreography. <laughs> so I'm drumming in the car. If you ever what's, see me. What's part of that playlist? What's one that oh is really gosh. good for cardio drumming? Oh, all of it. Um, I knew you would ask me. I had, uh, hit the road, Jack, and don't ask me the artist. That's the great thing about Pound. It's all these genre. Um, a little salt and pepper. Is oh, there. nice. Old school. Oh, yeah. Yes. Love it. A little ACDC. Okay. I mean, you know. You mix it up a little oh bit. Oh, my gosh, yes. It's music. Uh, what about your favorite snack, your go-to? Don't make fun of me. I Tuna. Won't. Your favorite snack is yes, tuna. You okay, you just failed this <laughs> entire interview. Your favorite toy as a kid? Oh man, I don't remember what it was. But you know those things, the sit and spin or the bouncy. Oh, like, the oh sit and gosh. spin. Oh gosh, my son loves that, and yes. it, I can't even watch him do it. Makes well, I didn't me do it correctly. Oh. It, was, it was usually Henri with a younger sister. And oh, okay. Getting dizzy. Okay, yeah. I, I can't even watch my son do the sit and spin. <laughs> it's just, it makes me want to throw up. Uh, your first concert. Oh, my gosh. And you gave me these ahead of time. I did. I know, right? Um, probably Bob Schneider, which... Bob Schneider. I'm going to I'm gonna be entirely big. honest. I don't know who probably that is. Probably don't, because he's, he's an Austin artist. Okay. But he doesn't... Uh, He's not, he didn't, he's not like a huge, but he's still like trap tours, but I've been to a lot of smaller. What is he? Is he country? Um, he's very eclectic. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, he plays tons of instru instruments, the band. Okay. You have to, now I know what now you're going to Google. I'm going to Google it. I'm going to look that up. Hey, okay, I'm a teacher. I'm trying to educate. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, when you're not inspiring this next <laughs> generation of active movers, um, what TV show do you look forward to watching? I don't watch a lot of TV. I am really boring. You are really boring. Um, it used to be Modern Family. Uh huh. And my husband and I now um, we have a the box set, all the DVDs of Everybody Loves Raymond. Okay, what's a DVD? Awesome. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right? So you watch DVDs of Everybody Loves Raymond? Um, right now we're on that. It was the New Heart show. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh! And I'm. I'm You're still exposing in my a lot in this interview. <laughs> you are no longer a hometown hero, Kristen. Uh, thank you. So, I'm just teasing, I of course. <laughs> thank you so much for being a guest on Beyond the Gym Floor. And if you would like to be a guest or simply have a comment or a question, you can reach me, Jamie O'Connor, at beyondthegymfloor at gmail.com. Encourage your friends to listen and subscribe to the show either through iTunes, iHeartRadio, or Spotify. Thanks for listening, folks. Kristen is parked illegally and needs to get to yes, her I car am. ASAP. Take care. <laughs> ASAP. Take care.